Welcome back to part two of my talk on how to interpret CT uh, brain perfusion studies. So this is a figure that shows the CBV um, map versus the MTT map. And notice there's a small defect on CBV and sort of a moderate sized defect on MTT. So that shows that this is a small core infarct with a moderate amount, amount, amount of surrounding potentially reversible ischemia. So here's another uh, figure. So say the CB defect is moderate size and the MTT defect is moderate size. So we would say that this is a matched defect and that means that it is a core infarct, a completed infarct with no surrounding potentially reversible ischemia. Now a few diagrams out of a, um, a, a literature article from 2010, American Journal of Neuroradiology, and I just want to go over a few of the uh, example figures. So. Um, First thing to do when you're reading one of these is look at all the images available and find the defect. So we'll look at, here's a defect on the right on the CBF, and it's a defect in MTT, and here's the CBV, and it's kind of subtle, but it's a defect on CBV. So once you find a defect, then you compare the CBV to the MTT, and I would always put the CBV here and the MTT here when you're reading them just for consistency. It makes it easier. So the um, so the CBV defect is matched to the MTT defect, so that's a matched defect, which means it's a completed core infarct, and there is no surrounding potentially reversible ischemia. So here's another case. So first look at all the images and find the defect. So here it is, here it is, and, and uh, nothing there. So now we found the defect. Now compare the CBV to the MTT to see what it is. So on the CBV, there is no defect, so no core infarct. On an MTT, there is a defect, so that means it's a only a mismatched defect, so that's consistent with um, hypoperfusion or potentially reversible ischemia with no core infarct. And then here's um, a case to rem just to remind you that um, it's not always easy. There's other things to keep in mind that can, can simulate uh, infarct. So you have to look at the clinical history and the CT and know uh, that you're dealing with a potentially acute infarct. Otherwise you can get, get confused by seizures that on CT perfusion can look just like um, acute infarcts and also tumors can have a variety of appearances. And then there's this entity called reperfusion hyperemia which is what this is a case of. So this patient came in with an infarct and then it ended up recanalizing and then they got the CT perfusion. So you can see that this um, so the hard part here is even this, this determining which side is abnormal. That can be the tricky part. But here, notice that the CBV in the region of the infarct is actually increased. There's a little bit of increased blood volume. Um, the CBF has quite a bit of increased blood flow in the region. And then the MTT has slow or reduced transit time, so rapid transit time through this part of parenchyma. So this can be a sign of reperfusion hyperinjury, or a reperfusion um, hyperemia, what we used to call um, luxury perfusion. So it's actually a bad sign. Um, if, it, if it tends to persist late, it's a bad sign because it often ind indicates that they're actually going to go on to infarct or maybe even hemorrhage. But keep in mind that sometimes you have to, it's hard to determine which side is the abnormal side. So knowing the history and the CT findings can help with that in difficult cases. All right, now a few more diagrams for practice. So this is the CBV defect versus the MTT defect, and I would say that they are matched. They equal each other, so this is a completed core infarct with no surrounding potentially reversible ischemia. All right, so this one has no CBV defect, but sort of a moderate size MTT defect, so this is no core infarct, but um, a moderate zone of potentially reversible ischemia only. So here we have a pretty small CBV defect and moderate size MTT defect. So this means that there is a relatively small core infarct and a moderate amount of surrounding potentially reversible cerebral ischemia. Here's another one. So this shows a large CBD, a CBV defect of the entire brain and then a matched MTT defect of the entire brain. And if this is present on all the all the images, that would mean that the there's a large core infarct with no potential reversal ischemia, which would be essentially be brain death. So on this one, shows a small CBV defect and sort of a moderate size MTT. 
So this uh, would indicate a small core infarct with a moderate amount of surrounding potentially reversible ischemia. So this is what the CBV images actually look like from the series. And um, I wanted to, um, to emphasize a few things. So one is always check the cerebral cortex. Look carefully, sometimes people call it the cerebral mantle. Look all the way around and make sure that there are no defects in the CBV of the cortex. Then check the basal ganglia. So the basal ganglia also have gray matter and should also show up. And so look at the three dots of each basal ganglia, the caudate, the putamen, and the thalamus. Three dots for each side, right? So check the basal ganglia, make sure that none of those are missing. And then check the cerebellar cortex, right? Because the uh, CBV should be present in all the gray matter. So check cerebral cortex, deep gray matter, basal ganglia, and then the cerebellar cortex. So this is what a CBV, a normal CBV would look like. And then this is actually the same case on the MTT. So this is what our normal MTT would look like. You know, 22 slices, five millimeters thick. And um, notice that on this side, the MTT is way prolonged. So here we have a large MTT defect through the entire MCA territory, but, on the, but the CBV is normal. So this is a large mismatched defect indicating potentially reversible ischemia throughout the right MCA territory. This is the same um, case showing all four sequences that are available. So the first thing to do when you're reading is look at all the sequences and find the defect. The TTD will be your good friend often showing you the defect. Then you analyze it. Well, what is it? So if to figure that out, you look at CBV versus MTT. So CBV is normal, large MTT. That mean is it means it's not a core infarct, and there's a large amount of potentially reversible ischemia. Then you fill out the template, the report template. So here's our current report template. And um, basically, you're going to list the, four, the findings on the four sequences. So in this particular case, you'd go to the CBV, say, what are the findings of CBV, CV, CBV core infarct? And you would say, um, you know, uh, normal or no defect, right? And then you go to MTT and you would look here and you go large MTT defect throughout the entire right middle cerebral artery territory. And then you go to CBF and you basically would copy and paste it because it's basically similar. TTD, you copy and paste it. And then you would say, okay, what's the mismatch or how much penumbra is or what's potentially reversible ischemia, the difference between MTD and core infarct. In this case, you would say um, there's a large mismatch defect on the right with no underlying core infarct. And then your CT perfusion summary would just be there's a large um, area of potentially reversible ischemia throughout the right MCA territory with no underlying core infarct. And then these two things are so important that I put them on a template um, uh, even though you can't really tell off the CT perfusion. So signs of hemorrhage and you would look at the non-contrast head CT and you'd say none on the accompanying non or re on the recent non-contrast head CT. Then signs of intravascular thrombus and you would say in this case by looking at the CT CTA you say um, right M1 occlusion uh, from uh, thromboembolism. And then, um, then you just fill your impression out here, which would be in this case something large, like a um, large amount of potentially reversible ischemia throughout the right MCA territory with no evidence of underlying core infarction. All right, so now let's go through a couple of practice cases. So um, this patient came into the ER they had new symptoms, but they had this old infarct on a non contrast head CT. So the question was, well, um, you know, what was going on? So they did a CT perfusion. And so the first thing to do is look at all the sequences and find the abnormality. So in this case, you can see there's a big abnormality on our old friend that often shows it the time to drain. And then you start to analyze it. Well, you say MTT. So you, to analyze, you compare the CBV to the MTT. You say there's a large MTT defect and a relatively small CBV defect. So you say, and that actually corresponds to CT. So you would say there's a relatively small core infarct with a large amount of surrounding potentially reversible ischemia throughout the left hemisphere. And it turns out on the CTA, they showed a left internal carotid occlusion. So uh, I'm going to end this video for here, and then you'll, uh, I'll continue it on the next video.